Hi there, my name is Robert Hock and I'm a Sitecore Technology MVP from the Netherlands. In my last videos, I walked you through how easy it was to get started with Sitecore 10 headless development with ASP.NET Core and Docker containers. And I've given you an overview of the architecture that was set up and the inner workings of the rendering host. Before continuing on that solution, in today's video, I want to show you a second example of a project that can be set up that shows you how to do Sitecore 10 ASP.NET Core headless development with Docker containers. The Sitecore Helix examples are demonstrations of Sitecore Helix practices across various tooling and business scenarios. One of these is focusing on .NET Core headless development with Docker containers. The Sitecore Helix examples are intentionally uh, small and low in functionality so that it can demonstrate the basics of modular architecture without being too overwhelming. The HP.NET Core example is one of the examples of the Helix basic company site. Let's go into this example. This one. So this is one of the examples of the Helix basic company site. But this one is actually using HP.NET Core rendering SDK and Sitecore content serialization based implementation of the Helix basic company. The site is rendered, as in the previous uh, videos, as an independently running rendering host built in ASP.NET Core. Some modules contain code for both the rendering host and the CMCD roles. The great thing about this example is that the items are serialized using the new Sitecore CLI. The solution is using a uh, rigid uh, Gelee's Helix publishing pipeline for publishing, but only for deploying to the CM and CD instance. Anyways, let's get started. Now that you're here in the Sitecore Helix examples uh, Git repository, make sure you open up this uh, code uh, icon and then copy this uh, and do a Git clone. So I've cloned my uh, I've cloned the Helix uh, examples uh, repository and. I open up this uh, Windows PowerShell uh, prompt in admin mode, of course. So let's go into uh, into the examples uh, directly. And here you can actually see the four uh, implementations of the Helix example site. Well, in this video, we're going to do the ASP.NET Core uh, headless one. So uh, let's go into, uh, into that one. And as you can see here, I've already copied a Sitecore license file into, uh, into this directory. So on the, the Git repository, let's go into the examples and let's open up that ASP.NET Core uh, Helix basic uh, website directly. So there are some prerequisites. Uh, as I've shown in the previous video, uh, you need to have .NET Core installed. Uh, you need to have Docker containers uh, up and running uh, in, in Windows uh, mode, of course. Uh, and now we can actually just copy this item where we're going to uh, initialize this whole uh, this project. So let's copy it over. So now let's paste this in. And I'm going to specify this local directory where I have stored my, uh, my license file here. So I'm going to uh, say, okay, this is the current directory, and license.xml. So we don't need to uh, specify a, a Sitecore admin uh, password as we did in the previous video. Uh, we actually uh, gave it in there, but by default, it's already B. So uh, let's run this. So, as you could have seen here, uh, we're running into this, uh, this issue. A parameter cannot be found that matches the parameter name allowed pre-release. So apparently this Helix basic HP.NET Core um, script has a little bit of a difference between the one that we used in the previous video, which was in the, in the Kaye uh, one, and this one. So let's, uh, let's do a, a, a compare. So here uh, I'm preparing my uh, Kaye project that I set up in, uh, in my previous video and the Helix examples one. And as you can see here, the, it has a couple of different uh, parameters uh, set up. 
So one of the one of the other changes is here is it actually in the Docker tools uh, setup that it has this parameter uh, configured allow pre-release and allow pre-release, which we don't have here uh, anymore in the uh, in the other one that I used in my previous video. So uh, let's remove this allow pre-release because it's not passed in here as well. Uh, and let's get rid of that in order to uh, to be able to uh, continue with the install. So now that we remove that allow uh, pre-release uh, option uh, for the site of Docker tools, let's uh, let's run this command uh, once more and see if it actually installs. So. Once again, it looks like it's, uh, it's successful and uh, setting up the certificates, etc., uh, adding the Windows host file entries. And now our, uh, our project has been initialized and uh, let's continue on the next step. So by default, uh, Docker Compose actually reads two files, uh, Docker Compose uh, Compose.yaml file and an optional Docker Compose Override.yaml file. Let's have a look what we have in our directory. So we do have like a Docker Compose Override file and uh, the default Docker Compose YAML file. So by convention, the Docker Compose YAML file, this one contains your base configuration, while the override file, as the name implies, can contain configuration overrides for existing services or new services. Uh, let's run this command, docker compose uh, dash, uh, I mean, hyphen F. Uh, so it reads that docker compose YAML file, but it also reads that override file. And let's, uh, let's add the pool uh, command to it. So it will actually get the latest images uh, for the ones that are specified in these docker compose uh, files. So in your case, you might not have uh, have the images uh, uh, yet. And let's see if this actually pulls all the latest versions of uh, the .NET SDK, so uh, SQL, ID, uh, the CM server CD, traffic. Uh, well, as you can see, now we need to do a Docker Compose build for the CD, for the rendering, ID, solar, uh, this will actually uh, create your uh, uh, create your images, and uh, yeah, let's do that uh, right now. So Docker dash compose build cd rendering id solar ms sql redis cm dot net SDK and the solution. So as you can see here, now all the images are built. This might, um, because I've done it previously, uh, this might take you uh, way more time that it actually downloads all these uh, images from uh, from the Psycho repository. So here we are in the Docker desktop uh, dashboard. And as you can see, I currently have no containers uh, up and running. But I do have a lot of images uh, currently on disk, and these will, uh, yeah, download it uh, uh, with the command that we just uh, did. So as you can see, you can see uh, all the basic company uh, images already, but we also have like default psycho images, uh, but also like the base layers, uh, traffic images. Uh, the one, the .NET Core ones uh, from Microsoft. So uh, as you can see, you, you can really see uh, how layered it is. So now with the images in uh, place in the uh, Docker desk, uh, desktop uh, dashboard, uh, let's go back to this uh, Helix examples uh, uh, GitHub repository and make sure that you're in the examples folder, Helix basic uh, ASP.NET Core folder. Um, so we initialized and we build all the images and now all we need to do is docker compose up uh, with that d for daemon 
and this will then uh, yeah build a Download any required uh, Docker images, but I guess we already have those. Build the solution and sidecar runtime images. Start the containers. So let's uh, let's have a look at that. Docker compose up, and let's give this a, a run. So this might take a while in your case as well. We have the images uh, on disk, and now we're basically say, hey, create those containers and, uh, and spin them up. And that's it. So our containers should now be uh, up and running. Let's have a look at the uh, Docker desktop dashboard. Now, as you can see here, the images, these are the ones that are currently in use. You can actually uh, see that. Um, let's have a look at the uh, containers here. And as you can see, it's up and running and all the necessary uh, uh, cycle roles are up and running. Trafic is up and running. The rendering host, we got a separate CM server, separate CD server as well. Uh, even we have a, a Redis cache uh, server. In the, in the topology. Uh, in the next step, we're going to uh, see what we need to do in the solution uh, in order to uh, deploy our uh, code on top of uh, these containers. So now that this was uh, complete, you can actually access the instances with the following. So let's copy over that link address and let's open that up in one of our browsers. And let's paste that in and see if the CM server is coming up. Um, and as you can see, the CM server is, uh, is up. Let's go to slash sidecore. It will load identity server. As you can see here, let's log in with admin B. And yeah, everything has been set up. So in the next step, we're going to uh, have a look at the, uh, at the solution on how to uh, deploy uh, our code on top of this because uh, yeah, we have this basic blank default sidecore uh, installation. So now that we've accessed the, the website, let's push and publish the items. So first restore the sidecore CLI .NET tool, which is the, the, the new uh, CLI. Uh, let's copy that over. Let's copy it over and let's paste that in. .NET tool restore. The CLI was restored. Available commands are Sitecore. Let's go back into uh, log in with the Sitecore CLI with the following command. Let's, let's log in. Let's copy that over. Let's paste that in. Now we want to authenticate here. Uh, yes, allow. Okay, we've successfully authorized. The login is complete. You can close the browser tab now. Login information has been saved. So we're all logged in right now. Uh, this will open a browser tab. So now uh, we can push the latest serialized items uh, uh, to Sitecore. Let's copy that over. .NET Sitecore, sure, push. And as you can see here, the new Sitecore civilization uh, tool is in action. Okay, changes have been applied to this uh, CM uh, server. Um, let's go back. And of course, we need to, uh, we need to publish uh, Let's publish all the items. So a publish has been started. And the publish is complete. So, uh, 
and you should now be able to view the basic site at okay let's copy that over uh, if you want to stop site when you end docker compose down or you use the uh, uh, docker desktop uh, tool so let's open up this uh, and this is actually the rendering host so uh, this is not the cd server this is actually that headless uh, ASP.NET Core rendering host and as you can see here we have this beautiful basic company uh, website which we can uh, click through and this is uh, using the, uh, the the layout service to actually get the data from Sitecore in a headless way so uh, that's it and uh, thank you for watching